I want to talk about why we're doing this because I know that it seems a little bit crazy to be making all this stuff, but quite frankly, because it's organic and the cost is incredibly cheap. So we need to use both of these together, right? We use the jot on sulfur and the wetting solution, but each of them only costs about a dollar a quart. And then, so seriously, to fill this up, it's gonna cost me just a few pennies. It's amazing how far it stretches. And that way I can take care of all of the bugs in my garden and preserve the crop for our own family, right? It's highly destructive when you have a bunch of insects taking over and, and killing all of your hard work. So great low cost solution. Hey, Provider Preppers, I'm Jonathan. And I'm Kylene, and today we have some excitement. Now, I hope this doesn't get too exciting, actually, because as you can tell, we are going to be working with some chemicals, and we are making Jodon's um, JS solution. So it's Jodon sulfur solution, and this is part of um, the insecticide program that we have that um, is natural, organic, and pretty exciting, because once we make this, it has like this indefinite shelf life. But I haven't done this before, and these chemicals are a bit scary, so I think we're gonna be okay, but you never know. John's gonna do all the work. I'm gonna stand back and tell him what to do. Okay, it's really important with this that we um, add the ingredients in the order and do this exactly like it shows in Jadam's book. And the first thing we're gonna add is sulfur. So we are making a 10 liter batch. You notice this is a stainless steel pot, and we are gonna add 5.51 pounds of sulfur. The next one we wanna add is actually the, they have phyllite, but we're gonna do azomite or azomite, which is right here. It's just a powdery rock. And then that's 0.5 kilograms, and then 0.5 kilograms of low acid. Now you don't have to use either of these in there, but it does increase the um, ability for it to be able to stick on some bugs and kill them. And now we're going to put in the, how much of the sea salt are we doing? One cup. One cup of the sea well, salt. Yes. And the sea, it has liters. to be sea salt. It can't be regular salt because we want the nutrients that are in the sea salt. So that's why you use the sea salt. Now we move over and we're gonna add the sodium hydroxide, 4.41 pounds. So what we did, is we measured out the, the smaller amount, the 0 0.41, but then these containers come really conveniently in two pounds. So now the water is in two different parts. The initial water is 1.32 gallons and we're gonna add that all at one time. It's really important that we don't add it slowly, that we just dump it all in and start stirring. So do you want me to dump that and you can stir? Okay. All right, are you ready? Yeah, this is let's pretty do exciting. it. It's going to get hot here. It's really important that you stir the bottom and keep it off the bottom of the container. And then my job is actually to monitor the temperature because if it exceeds 80 degrees Celsius, then we are supposed to add water. The second amount of water that we're gonna add is actually 0.85 gallons. Ooh, that smells nasty. You can't smell Good the Good stuff. Hot. Not as much as you probably can. So if it gets too hot, we're gonna add a little bit of this water. It's already measured out because at the end, this is the total amount of water that should be in this batch. Now we're getting up a little higher. We may want to add just a little bit of water to control the reaction. But we do need the heat there to melt the sulfur. And I think the danger is boiling over. We don't want it to boil over. And if we add too much, it'll ruin it all. It's really important that you do this in a well-ventilated area. If you need to do it inside, do it someplace like the garage, but I, 
I definitely, personally, would never do this in my kitchen. It's pretty stinky. Okay, it looks like it's mostly dissolved. How does it feel at the yeah. bottom? Is there any more on the bottom? Not much. There's maybe just a few little spots, but nothing serious. Okay, so the directions say, stir sulfur with stick thoroughly to melt it completely and check if there's any unmelted sulfur at the bottom. Sulfur melts completely in approximately 20 minutes at high temperature. All right, what do you think? Time to add the rest of the water? I'd say it's time. Let's do so it. you add that one and I'll add this one. We've pre-measured this water. So the total of the second um, watering, what is that what you call it? The added water is a total of 0.85 gallons. The next step is to actually let this, the sediment settle in this for a day or two. I'm trying to decide if we should package it up today and then strain it later. So after a little bit of debate, we decided that what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and stick the lid on this. And we're just going to leave it alone for a day or two and then we're gonna come back and bottle it. We'll strain it and then we'll bottle it. We'll see you in a day. We let this Jotam sulfur settle for a couple days just so that all the sediment would, would settle out. And now we're gonna strain it. Now, this is my own little concoction. So John put those on, on this because we left this outside and we didn't want the dog to get into it or anything to happen to it. But what, what we decided to do is we've just got this little pot here and it had something in it. Okay, so we've got this little pot here and this is just a colander. And then this is a paint straining bag. I don't know if we need more filtration than a paint straining bag, but we'll start here and see how this goes. So the plan is just that we're gonna dump this into here. Hmm, this is pretty heavy. All right, let's see what you can do, Johnny. And we wanna take it slow, right? Check out the sediment that's on the bottom of this. Can you see that? Like, it's a good reason to have that um, strain. And this caught some stuff, right? I think there wasn't a whole lot um, to be caught, but for the most part, it did a really good job of melting all of that sulfur. Okay, we'll just set this aside for now. It's like this beautiful color, actually. You wanna push that over there? We're gonna try and not make a mess, but something tells me that it's going to be a bit messy. We're just gonna fill up these quarts. It's supposed to have made 10 liters. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, so it smells, it still smells sulfurish, but it doesn't smell as bad as it did the day we were making it. When we were making it the first day, it smelled really bad. Take that. And um, so I used some of this a couple days ago. Right after we'd finished making it, I went ahead and mixed up a batch. And it's interesting, I don't know if it's the sulfur itself, but I used it on some of my brassicas that had some aphids, problems with aphids. Um, some of my kale and my broccoli and it's been two days and the plants actually look a lot happier. So I'm not, I'm not sure how much this had to do with it or maybe just getting rid of the aphids, but I was pretty excited. I am so excited. So we finished this. It's all bottled up, indefinite shelf life. And quite frankly, I was pretty scared to do this. I, I was really intimidated, but the process really wasn't that hard. And now I would do it again, no problem at all. Um, I think that it, it looks really good in the bottles. I think it's gonna be effective, but the thing I need, we need to remember is that without the wetting agent that you mix together with it, it really isn't anywhere near as effective. So you need both for it to work really well. Um, the dilution rate is between 100 and 1,000 times, and you can find out all that information in these books. Um, I would just highly recommend them. He's done such a fantastic job and there's a lot of really good helpful information along with step-by-step -step instructions 
on how to make this. And now for the question of the day, what are you doing to organically take care of the pests in your garden? Comment below. And thanks for being part of the solution.